stay patient, guys. Again, I say this every single day. You don't need to trade every day. Your process is not going to be highlighted or you know deemed the sweet spot every single day. Everybody trades differently. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody's alive and kicking and healthy, uh, enjoying beautiful spring weather. Um, just, just again, I, I want to put it into perspective. I, I, I think a lot of traders, um, because of social media and their exposure to social media, um, a lot of you guys uh, pretty much started in the last you know, four years, right? I think that, I think that's, that's, that's a very good um, assumption. Um, and the only thing you've really seen was uh, the end of bull market Obama, uh, the whole four years of Trump, and, you know, for the first part or so, a Rocky Road uh, type of uh, Biden administration. But you've pretty much seen a really aggressive bull market. And for the last you know month or so, uh, and again, if you've been watching this broadcast, I've been pre predominantly sell bias. And again, the market's been playing out that way um, pretty well. I mean, especially uh, this week, we saw uh, a big gap up on Monday, stuffed at the 50-day moving average, stuffed again the next day in the 50-day moving average. And for the next three days, some really good sell bias actions. And again, if you've been watching this broadcast, you know, some pretty good value on the downside. Same thing uh, happened on Thursday and same thing happened uh, towards the la towards the beginning and most of the part on Friday's session before this uh, really aggressive rebound in the last hour. I, I, you know, I logged off around you know 2.30. I didn't even see this. So uh, we, you know, we were at literally at the lows uh, of the day, you know, right, you know 2 o'clock, 2.30 on the NASDAQ. And then you look up and you're getting all these text messages around like 3.30. You'll look at the market. Look at me. I thought the market imploded and you can see this monster move up. And we'll get to that in a second. But I, I think a lot of people, um, you know, because the market has been so good and so linear and so aggressive and, you know, especially a lot of the names, speculation names that have been, you know, going crazy and, and like GameStop has been kind of the poster boy of what's been going, you know, what's been going on for a very, very long time. But I, I think a lot of people, because the market was so good, uh, they were spoiled. And you know, you hear a lot of a lot of times, especially in the last month or so, and say, "Wow, oh, what's wrong with this market, guys?" There's nothing wrong with this market. Okay, um, you know, unfortunately, again, a lot of you guys, the only thing you know is a, is a bull market, is a linear bull market with two, three day dips, and then they they buy the dips and they go back. Um, you know, if you were trading from the end of the dot com bubble, right, mid uh, two thousand all the way to 2003, you saw a big, big uh, area of, well, you can't buy stocks. And let me tell you why. The end of the dot-com bubble was the, you know, the pop, right? That was the top. Um, you know, the, the, the bull market was over just because the internet bubble bur bursted and we went lower. A few months later came 9-11, unfortunately, right? And because of 9-11, because of the new terroristic world we kind of lived in, it was impossible to trade the markets between 2001 and 2003, especially that first year after 9-11, just because we were always on alert for another terrorist attack. So you couldn't go along the market because, again, you were fear of an attack coming and you couldn't short the market because, again, um, there was always a, an area that they were going to find uh, the terrorists and the market was going to explode back higher. So there was at some point between that two and a half year window, two year window, there was nothing you can do to trade with conviction and make money. So the idea of that three weeks went by, four weeks went by, and you're not getting a bull market and you're get, not getting this rabid bull market that you can buy every single dip. You know, there's nothing, there's, there's nothing different about this tape. There's nothing absolutely different between uh, an area of 2021 than there was in 2001. The market goes up and the market goes down. And there are periods in your career. And if you trade long enough, you're going to see that. So that two-year window between 2001 and 2003, I couldn't make a penny, right? Not a single dime. Between 2007 and towards the, the end of 2009 was the mortgage crisis, right? Not exactly the most friendliest of buy the dip scenarios, you couldn't buy the dip because again, banks were going out of business, brokers were going out of business, insurance companies were going out of business, foreclosures, people were losing their homes, not exactly the greatest scenario 
on the long side. So there's years and years and years in your career that you will be faced with tremendous amount of adversity. Uh, this is not one of them, okay? This is just really, realistically, is not one of them. The problem is most of you guys, again, have not seen uh, any type of long duration of a pullback. And what we saw in the last several weeks was good gravity, right? Uh, were the buyers tired? Yeah, obviously the buyers were tired. Was there any technical damage uh, on this move to the downside? It never was, but the value was on the downside. And I say this all the time. There's a difference between an investor and there's a difference between a trader. And a lot of times, you know, you're talking about a stock. And again, I, I trade channels, okay? Uh, I'm not a bull, I'm not a bear. I, I trade Tesla long, I'll trade it short, okay? When I'm going long, I'm not thinking about gigafactories, I'm not thinking about uh, delivery numbers, I'm not thinking about any of that stuff. When I'm going short, uh, I'm not thinking of, well, you know, hopefully the, the, the company will be a fraud and the stock will get a hold and go to it. None of this comes across. It's all channels. So the idea that investor versus trader, we've talked about this so many times, it's a completely different world. It's like have, it's like a zebra having a conversation uh, with a thoroughbred. A zebra is a zebra, right? A thoroughbred is a thoroughbred. So it's, this is a completely different conversation. So the idea that the market pulls in, you, you're not bearish. You're just taking advantage of the price action. And that's exactly where the market has been for the last several weeks. But there is, you know, there is pockets of strength in any type of market that has been weaker, okay, or sell bias. You've always seen very aggressive spikes. So for example, even going back to uh, the mortgage mess in 2007 through 2009, no matter how bad the news was, the market didn't go straight down. It felt like it did, but there was always pockets of aggressive rallies. And again, I'm not going to compare uh, the mortgage mess to what we saw on Friday, right? You know, and the queues literally went from 311 to 316 in an hour. You know, $5 moving the queues is tremendous. But that's what's going to happen. The difference between a bull market scenario and a bear market scenario, when there's a bull market, there's tremendous opportunity, right? Everywhere, okay? Uh, much better liquidity, spreads are tighter, more active participants because it's feel good, right? Everybody's buying stocks. When you're trading to the downside, and by the way, before we even get back to the downside, when you're trading also in a bull market scenario or buy side bias, okay, even if you get in on the wrong entry, okay, because the market is so strong, before because the market is so aggressive, and there's such a big wave of euphoria, the market will make you right. The difference between a bull scenario and a bear scenario, and kind of what we've been seeing now for the last month or so. In a bear scenario, you can't trade everything, okay? You can't trade aggressively every single day, and you really have to wait for pockets of selling. So when you see that day that goes to the upside, the majority of time why people don't make money on the upside when you're getting a bounce, because most stocks, and we've talked about this in pretty much nausea uh, for this whole week, everything was under supply, right? For, for, for weeks, you know, for, you know, for about two weeks now, everything's under supply. So when, when a market rallies and when your stock rallies and all of a sudden, you know, the, the stock rallies for like two minutes and all of a sudden goes down $6 30 minutes later, yeah, it's, there's a chance it's going to hit some sort of uh, micro supply zone and then turn around. That's what supply is. So in a, in a sell scenario, um, you have to wait for macro levels, right? You can't be uh, very, very aggressive in a, in a macro sell cycle because you need these stocks to start confirming ranges. And when they do start confirming ranges, this is when you take your very aggressive move. So you're not trading five, 10 times uh, to the downside uh, on a sell signal or, or a day that the market's moving up. You're waiting for that one or two plays that when they're setting up macro and you, you, know, you do your nightly research um, you're probably going to get some pretty good value. And that's exactly what we saw pretty much the whole week. Uh, we saw a really good pull uh, from Wednesday into Thursday, from Thursday into Friday. And Friday, it felt like the market was going to really collapse there. It really did for like 85, you know, 85, 90% of the day. And then when I logged off around 2.30, they, you know, they had that really, really big rally. But there was tremendous, tremendous value this week uh, on the sell side. And I, you know, the fact that we had this really big run uh, in the last hour in, in a lot of the indexes, especially in the queues, when I was doing my chart work uh, this weekend, and, and again, when you look at a lot of the charts, they're still broken, right? Tesla's still broken. Uh, Netflix is still broken. Uh, NVIDIA is still broken. A lot of these names are still broken, right? That's, that's not where the value is. You know, I think if the market is going to go higher uh, this week, there's a lot of groups that look very, very good. Look at the, 
Uh, look at the look at the um, the home builders. Look at the home builders, uh, and I'll, I'll show you the pivots from Friday. You know, like look at Lennar, right? And he had this really big breakout on Friday. It was a pivot here, and I'll show you in a second. From 100, confirmed 101, went to 104. The home builders look right, right? They're starting to turn around. Look at look at Toll Brothers for uh, for this week. It looks really really good. The home builders look good. Um, you talk about metals, right? Look at CMC. Big breakout, right? Look at U.S. Steel, right? It's ready, ready to break out again. Uh, look at the, some of the software names. Look at some of the, the storage names, right? Like a VMW, right? Look at VMW. Look how strong this is. Look at look at an NTAP, right? Breaking out. Look at look at the semiconductors. And this is what's amazing. How when when the queues were weak for so many days in a row, a lot of these semis held up incredibly well. Look at AMAT exploded on Friday. You know, look at this. You know, look at the Texas Instruments for this week. Look at a Xilinx uh, into this week. Oops, wrong one, not a Xilinx. Uh, Maxim, Maxim. Uh, look at a Maxim. Uh, look at a Clack, right? So there's a lot of pockets of strength that really took off with the rest of the indexes, especially on Friday. Do I think beta catches up at some point? Hard to say. It really is hard to say. But I, I, if we do continue a rally uh, into this week, and if you look at like the IWM, you know, really recovered. And, and IWM had a really aggressive sell-off for about two weeks. You know, recovered, try to reclaim the 50-day moving average. Again, not out of the woods, but you could see the recovery. You could see uh, the spiders as well had this really pretty big aggressive sell-off. And in one day, literally in the last hour, and if you look at the 60-minute view on the spies, the spies literally went through not only the five, but they reclaimed the 10-day moving average on one candle. So that's very, very bullish. So the key question uh, going into Monday session was this kind of like this freakish thing uh, that happened and we're going to start rolling over again uh, back Monday, or is this something real, right? And, and as much as I'm very, very comfortable selling ranges and that's all great, Everybody loves a bull market, right? Everybody loves to buy stocks. Again, there's much more opportunities uh, throughout the day. And of course, you can take much more size and then they're much more liquid. Are they going to go up as fast as stocks go down? Probably not, right? And I think we all know why. Um, but I, at some point, right, at some point when the directional bias changes and the setups are reflecting what we're seeing in the indexes, well, then there's a set sentiment shift. So, you know, I'm going to give the bulls the benefit of doubt on Monday, right? Maybe not the Tesla's of the world. Again, maybe not the Beyonds of the world or the Apples or the, uh, you know, maybe Squares of the world. But I think the semiconductors, the metals, the home builders, some financials, some insurance companies, if you do your homework this weekend, you could really find some really good value, especially the, the stocks uh, I just mentioned for some uh, potential confirmation reversals uh, back to the upside. So I will give the bulls. Uh, the benefit of the doubt. But I, what I really liked what we did uh, as a group, especially in the live webinar for the last three weeks, again, we, we, didn't, um, we didn't fall victim to, oh my God, the market is rallying. Let's just buy stocks. We saw what happened with those rallies. Those rallies lasted for three minutes. As soon as the, the, you know, as soon as a downtick in the futures, you know, these stocks collapsed, right? I was watching at, at one point, uh, what was it Wednesday or Thursday, I think I was watching the video, right? And the video looked like it was about to go higher. And I was like, I don't, it doesn't look horrible, right? And this is when you know you have no conviction in the trade. When you, turn, when you see the futures rally, and you're like, well, the stock doesn't look horrible. Is that really a great sign to buy stock? And two seconds later, when the futures went down like two handles, the stock sold off $5. So there was a lot of, lot of value and a lot of fear bids uh, for, you know, 95% of the week uh, to the downside. And, you know, listen, the bulls did a great job. They recaptured some pretty good levels on the diamonds, uh, on the spies, the queues are not out of the out of the woods just yet. But little by little, maybe because some of these other subgroups will pull these things up, maybe they'll have a bigger you know follow through going into this week. But again, I liked what we did this week. Um, the shorts were really aggressive. Friday again, Friday there was a you know there was a rally attempt in the market in the morning. There was nothing to buy, and there was a reason why nothing was ready to buy because there was nothing coming came you know came reclaimed supply. And it took Friday's session maybe about two hours, if you guys remember, two hours for the day to kick in. It felt like there was not, it felt like there was, the market wasn't even moving for the first two hours. And then slowly but surely, you saw some really aggressive bottom ranges uh, in Roku, uh, in Tesla, destroyed, right? Absolutely destroyed uh, mid morning towards the afternoon. And then obviously we had that rally back. So let's talk about some pivots uh, from Friday's session. And, you know, look, 
I, I like this HIG. I still like this HIG. Uh, look at this HIG. I don't believe it, it, it triggered on Friday. If I, uh, Yeah, it didn't trigger. Guys, keep an eye on this HIG also for going into this week. If this thing can start building, and obviously it never confirmed, but if this thing starts building, you know, you know, the 69, 70, 70 area, this is a gorgeous bull flag. Keep an eye on this thing for this week. This one never uh, triggered. Uh, Lennar, again, one of the very few uh, long pivots we had. Uh, Lennar, 100 needs to build. Here was Lennar, right? Here was Lennar. So it took out the 100. It got above 101.50s and traded right to 104. If this thing starts reclaiming uh, Friday's action, you can get more upside there. Beautiful move there. And, and then I started putting in a bunch of downside pivots. Uh, most of them did not trigger, but the ones that did, and you'll see in a second, they went down like like a, like a house of fire. Uh, Zoom never triggered. Uh, DDOG never triggered. Uh, CRM never triggered. Uh, Beyond never triggered. But Tesla did, right, guys? Tesla did. And there was a lot of aggressive pulls here on Tesla. 631 is a very aggressive area for experienced traders only. Again, not every single pivot is for everybody. Uh, there was a low of the week pivot that Played out also, if you guys remember the low of the week on Tesla was 609.50. But there was a very sneaky pivot. And again, for all you guys who watched uh, the PS60 workshop, we talked about sneaky pivots. They're not lows. They're not highs. There's, there's a channel in between that if you could identify, you can, you can really do well with that channel. So 631, very aggressive channel uh, for experienced traders only. If it builds below, can flush. Obviously, new traders stay away. Not every single channel is for everybody. So here was 631 on Tesla, right? If you could sell here, here is the three channels, right? Look at the low in these three channels, right? 632, 632, 631, right? So once Tesla took out the 631 level, this thing just got destroyed, just absolutely destroyed. And not only did it take out this, this level here at 631, it took out the lows from the week of 609 and went all the way down to 599. So huge move on Tesla. Congratulations for all you guys uh, who caught that. Uh, Boeing obviously never got to 251. Uh, Cost never got to 26. Uh, Adaptec never got down. I still like Adaptec. Uh, if it starts collapsing, it never got down to uh, $37. Uh, Facebook, again, not a big move at all, right? Not a big move at all just because there was it's all supply. And that's my whole point. These stocks cannot rally off supply. So here was the 282 uh, 80 level. Uh, it only went to, you know, only went like a dollar and change and then it got sold off again. That's my point about supply. These stocks cannot rally if they can't comply with supply. And most of these stocks, especially the beta names, uh, are still on the need supply. That's why you have to kind of look at other places at the start of the week until these stocks really start reclaiming uh, technical levels. Again, everything is getting weaker right now. Let's watch for the short periods. And again, this is where Tesla got destroyed. Uh, shop, congratulations for you guys who caught shop. Uh, 1020 for builds below can flush. Here was shop. And look at this candle here, right? Here's, look at this candle here. Here's the 1020. It took it out and went all the way down to uh, 1009 very, very quickly. And you can see just really aggressive dumps here uh, on the short side. Uh, so far, super slow session. And then an hour later, right, you have Roku. 307 is support if it builds below can flush. And here was Roku, right? Here was the 307, this whole area, 307 on Roku. And it got murdered, right? Went down all the way down. It went down $15 on this channel. I mean, really aggressive move. On Roku, um, really big move. So you could tell the ones that really confirmed on Friday got crushed. Uh, Tesla went down 30. Uh, Roku went down 15. Really big moves to the downside there as well. Shop as well, take on the way down. Um, yeah, nice job on Shop. Take on the way down of Roku. Uh, man, I've been waiting for this Zoom for like two weeks. It hasn't cracked. It's gone down there a couple of times. It has not cracked. I'm still waiting for Zoom. Uh, huge move on uh, huge move on Roku. Big move uh, on Tesla. Yada yada yada, and everything else. Uh, Six eighteen next stop, and then next thing you know, you know, next thing you know, and again it went down all the way down to five ninety nine. So I, I think in this market, it, you know, it, it is a very challenging market if you've start started your career only in this really aggressive bull market. It's just the reality. Um, there's nothing abnormal about this tape. It's just you haven't experienced the pullback yet. Um, is this, you know, was Friday the bottom of the market? Who knows? You know, who knows? Uh, Q's, again, 
you know, they still need to have a little work. Obviously, they still need to reclaim 621 for me to get really bullish. Uh, can they reclaim Friday's highs and push the 621? Of course, absolutely. So we're watching the queues. Uh, the Russell, after a really aggressive, you know, two and a half week sell off, woke up. Is it out of the woods yet? Absolutely not. The IWM needs to reclaim uh, 224 and a close to kind of wake up there. But the SPYs, uh, did reclaim the 10-day moving average and it looks like it wants to go back to highs and the diamonds uh, did as well, right? After, you know, two weeks of selling, it reclaimed. It actually looks just like the spies, so it looks good as well. So hopefully you guys are staying safe. Uh, stay patient, guys. Again, I say this every single day. You don't need to trade every day. Your process is not going to be highlighted or, you know, deemed a sweet spot every single day. Everybody trades different. Some people trade small caps. Some people trade futures, some people trade options, some people trade Forex and Bitcoin. I trade beta. It's a, it's a different game. It's a very patient game. There's only six candles throughout the day. Uh, you don't have any FOMO because you're watching these channels. You know the top of the channel, you know the bottom of the channel. And if you identify the sweet spot in the middle, you can catch all that love in between. So guys, I wish everybody the best. God bless. God loves you. Love yourself. Love your neighbor. And hopefully I'll see you guys all on Monday. Take care, guys.